All right, an elderly man at a nursing home in Shanghai was mistakenly declared dead and taken to a morgue. Chinese social media videos showing the two workers handing a yellow body bag to retrieve what they believed was a corpse. The local government responded to the incident on Monday, saying the man is now in stable condition. The incident comes as Shanghai enters one month of brutal lockdowns that have sparked outrage across the city. Authorities sealing residents inside their own home with iron fences and then stuff like this, mistakenly trying to take a guy to the morgue who is still alive. Joining us now to talk about the situation in Shanghai, the author of The Great U.S.-China Tech War and the Coming Collapse of China, Gordon Chang. Gordon, great to see you. Uh, you know, we've been covering this for a month now. It seems like longer because it's just so wild what the Chinese government is doing in Shanghai. The other thing we've been covering is the resistance from the people in Shanghai to this. And, you know, what do you see as the long-term effects of this on both Xi and the Communist Party in China? The first long-term effect is the economy, because clearly the economy was contracting in April, and it probably was also contracting in March, uh, certainly on a month-to-month -month basis, but probably also year-to-year. -year. And, and that is shaking China. Um, but nonetheless, the political system is demanding that these lockdowns continue. Um, this has gone from the deeply misguided to the totally insane. And it just shows you the nature of totalitarian systems. They can't adjust. I think it also shows us, Gordon, human nature. And, you know, we've talked in the past about this, you know, long march and how President Xi and the Communist Party wear these Chinese people down. This is a generational thing. But human nature is human nature. And, you know, anyone, whether you grew up in communist China or not, understands that this stuff goes way too far, locking people in their own homes. Yeah, and, and there is a breaking point. And in particular times during the history of the People's Republic, we have seen the Chinese people spill out into the streets and not only contest their government, but fight it. Um, we're not quite at that point in Shanghai, but we have seen people break quarantine as they've scrounged the city for food. And, and that's getting pretty close to um, revolution. You know, at this particular time, you know, the Chinese people, they, they sort of, you know, I think they fear the government. Um, they don't like it but they don't really want to contest it because they believe that they would lose. But once you get people set to a certain boiling point and in a certain enough numbers, then you have a full-scale revolt. And, mm -hmm. you know, Shanghai is not too far away from that. I'm not saying it'll get there. I think the government will relent in time. But nonetheless, there is this boiling point, which is pretty close. Yeah, will we see a, another Tiananmen Square moment? type of thing based on COVID. One more thing we wanted to play for you, Gordon Chang, is the CEO of Citibank, Jane Frazier, was recently asked on Bloomberg how long it's gonna take for some of these big American corporations to uncouple from China and change up their, their uh, supply chain routes. And here's what she had to say. I'm a mother of teenagers. They care about certain of their footwear. Um, it's going to take five to ten years to move that supply chain from China to India. Why is that? Scale, efficiency, quality of production. It takes some time for this to occur. So I think what the new normal in supply chains is going to look like, it's a five to ten year journey. It's not a one year one. Five to ten years. I mean, she was talking about slave labor in Xinjiang. Can we afford to wait five to ten years, Gordon, to uncouple from China? Well, it doesn't take that long. Um, when I was practicing law, uh, and this is going back to 1989, which you referred to, uh, I was representing an American consumer products company whose shares were publicly listed. They were manufacturing goods in Guangdong province near Hong Kong. And they felt that because of the political instability, they had to have another source of supply. So they actually moved their factory out of China to Thailand. It took about six months. And when they saw, for instance, that the um, political system and, and the repression wasn't going to affect business, well, they then took their factory in Thailand and they moved it back to China. And they were doing this within months, not five to 10 years. So I think Jane Fraser is absolutely wrong about that. Companies can move very fast. The only company that can't move fast is Apple. That's because its supply chain is very, very involved. Um, but, you know, they, they got to China in one place from Taiwan, um, they can move from China to someplace. 